I'm Photo Dave, and this is Toy Photography News. Holy crap, I'm really close to the camera. Here on Toy Photography News, I talk about all the things that I've found that I think are going to make our action figure photos even cooler. I break it down into figures, dios, props, and weapons, and then I have a nice little editorial at the end. This one is on collecting your way, so stay tuned and let's get to it. Now, the first part of Toy Photography News is beginning today like it does every week, and that is with action figures. Now, there are four criteria I have for action figures that I report on. The first one, they need to be 112 scale, or robots, because robots are cool. The second one, they need to articulate really well. I'm talking they need to move like people if they are people, so that means no waste cuts. The third they need to be able to have a lot of accessories so they can emote. A lot of hands, some head options, all the weapons they should come with. These should be complete action figures. And the fourth one is they'd better represent who it is they're supposed to represent. Wolverine better look like Wolverine. Superman better look like Superman because if they don't, they ain't making the news. So with that said... Let's start up with the action figures. This first figure comes to us from McFarlane Toys, which is kind of crazy because of all the companies I've talked about on this channel, McFarlane seems to be the one I've been the most critical of. I've even gone so far as to say it feels like there's someone in the chain of command where once a figure gets to be about 70 to 80% complete, they say good enough ship it out. And I have to say, with a lot of what I'm seeing from McFarlane recently, I'm starting to eat those words. Most of their figures are one-tenth scale, so I'm not interested yet until I'm able to make the Toy Picks collection kind of expand. But there are some he comes out with that can fit into your one-twelfth scale action figure collection. And this first one I'm going to talk about is the Mortal Kombat Wave 10 Shadow of Spawn action figure. Now what's crazy about this thing is it's like, okay, we're getting kind of a great Spawn figure. But what bothers me about it is not anything to do with the figure, believe it or not. It's the fact that it's in the Mortal Kombat line. It seems that Spawn himself, when it comes to his line, they're giving you all kinds of little takeoffs of Spawn. You know, you get all the Mandarin Spawns and this Spawn, that Spawn. But we haven't gotten a great classic Spawn. The Shadow of Spawn figure is a great classic Spawn. All I can see it really needing, and I'm kind of getting to the point where I kind of want to do this stuff myself, so your mileage may vary, but I can see the chain needing maybe some silver paint, maybe then adding some rust or some weathering or something to the whole figure, and this would be a phenomenal action figure. I'm really digging this Spawn, and I like what McFarlane Toys is doing. I think they're turning it around, which is a little bit of editorializing, but what's not editorializing is that this Spawn is available right now if you want him. Another figure from McFarlane Toys, I know, crazy weak, I feel like I should be hopped up on the sauce, but I'm not, is The Darkest Night. Now the problem with this figure is that he's a collect to build, and I don't really see how I could fudge the figures needed to build him into my 112 scale collection, but this figure, The Darkest Night here, he can be any size. He can be huge, he can be not huge, he would look perfect, and he really plays to what I think, and I think a lot of us think McFarlane does well, which is just creepy, horror-looking figures, and of course he plays into Todd's thing, which is Batman. He just looks really cool, and if I ever see him, and I ever just feel like picking him up on his own, I might actually spring for it, because dude looks rad. More editorializing. From Maestro Union comes part of Series 2 from the Furay Planet line. We have Veteran William. 
Folks, he's basically a werewolf that is like a human. He's a humanoid werewolf. That's that's pretty much it. They've got a whole story about this guy, and possibly even about Crocker, who is the first Fure Planet figure that they've done. I'm impressed, and what I'm seeing with these things is... I don't know how many of you are reading the IDW Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I only am up to about issue 120, so I'm in the middle of Mutant Town, and that's what I'm seeing here, is Furay Planet is providing us with characters to just load up our Mutant Town with. This dude's incredible. He comes with an alternate head, he comes with four hands, he comes with tons of weapons, he comes with all kinds of different clothing options, like belts, all holsters... It's ridiculous what this thing comes with, and the detail is out of this world. Photos of this thing are going to be incredible. I mean, you line up a bunch of this Fure Planet stuff together, and you're going to get some really cool shots. I don't know what else to say about this thing. Awesome figure. You want, you buy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a word from our special guest, Optimus Prime. I am Optimus Prime, and I send this message to all action figure photographers around the world. I am here. I am radical. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Prime. Never saw that guy as the braggadocious type, but that is a perfect place to put him in because, ladies and gents... We're done with action figures. We are moving on to robots. So if robots aren't your thing, I'll be sure to leave plenty of chapter breaks in the video description. So skip to the next thing you see that you're going to dig. But if you dig Mega Man, if you dig crazy foreign just cool figures like import stuff, if you dig Diaclone, and if you dig Transformers, stick around because they're next. Kotobukiya is releasing the Mega Man X, or is it 10? If you're a Mega Man person, let me know in the comments. Full armor, 112 scale, model kit. And yes, friends, I'm talking model kit here because, frankly, there are some model kits that when you put them together, you get a really awesome action figure. And look at the posing possibilities of this action figure. This is a good-looking robot. I don't know much about Mega Man, but I do know this one comes with three alternate faceplates, comes with three alternate hands, comes with a buster cannon, and it comes with some charge effects. Yeah. Again, I don't know my Mega Man, but when I look at these pictures, I know that those of you who do know your Mega Man and who do want to pick this thing up are going to be able to take some incredible shots of this guy. And personally... I can't wait to see him. From Damn Toys and Cold Dog comes the Death Gas Station Service Commissioner Jack 112 scale figure. Wow, that was in one take. Anywho, this is the kind of figure I love to find. I don't know that I'm going to add it to the collection, but there's so much imagination here. But what I really dig about it, what do we have to do when we pop an action figure out of its blister and we can't get a joint to move? Well, there are several methods. One is you dip it in hot water to loosen it up. One is you kind of use a heat gun, but you better be careful. If you're too hot, you're going to melt something. But the third is... You use a hair dryer, and ladies and gentlemen, this thing comes with a hot air dryer. Now, it doesn't actually work, but I saw just that thing in this imagery when it came to checking this dude out, and I just started laughing because I'm going, it would be cool if you just had one figure standing there trying to loosen up another figure's joints with this hot air dryer. Now, you can probably find a basic hair dryer on any kind of 112 scale anything, but it just struck me funny. And the imagination that goes nuts with this guy is crazy. It's got two sets of interchangeable hands. It's got the hat. It's got so much stuff, I'm not even going to pretend to list it. Just look at the pretty pictures and judge for yourself if you think this thing has all kinds of imagination baked into it. Because really, I check it out and I'm like, yeah, somebody had fun with that dude. If you've been watching Toy Pick since the beginning of the year, you'll know that earlier this year, I was big into Diaclone, as in I wanted to load up on Diaclone figures, but 
cooler heads prevailed, as in my cooler head, reminding me that, hey Dave, you have quite the rabbit hole tendency. I have a tendency to, hey, these things look like they're supposed to be army built, I'd want to army build them, and Mr. Stabby the Wallet would not allow such things. That doesn't mean I can't look at the pretty pictures. And when I saw the Diaclone DA-95 robot base, parentheses, Grand Diode, I just went, wow. This thing is insane. It comes with an insane price, but it's 20.47 inches long, which is crazy. You see all the little Diaclone figures hanging out on it. They're tiny. They're like, I think they're under an inch and a quarter. I've got just one, but yeah, they're, they're not big. So this thing makes it just look like a massive city to them. And it comes with all kinds of just cool stuff. Like, you take a picture of this thing, there's not an angle you're not going to be able to find that you could turn into just a cool photo. Let me read off, I'm going to cheat here and read off what all it comes with, because it's nuts. That's like the third thing that I'm going to have to cheat on today. This comes with the robot base itself, the body, Vehicle Mecha A, two Vehicle Mecha B, two Vehicle Mecha C, Vehicle Mecha D, four Diaclone version 2.0 members, Diaclone female member, a seal, a steel sheet, pamphlet instructions, and you know it's cool because instructions may or may not include English translation. So, just looking at this thing, it's eye candy, it's beautiful, and if I had billions of toy dollars, I'd go nuts on it. If you have billions of toy dollars, please go nuts on it, because I want badly to see the photos. From Takara Tomy comes the masterpiece Bumblebee Movie MPM 12N Nemesis Prime. So far, it looks like it's available on the Takara Tomy Mall website, but I'm sure it'll be available in other retailers. Who knows? I'm not 100% sure, but that tends to be how these things go. But... This uses the Optimus Prime mold from the Bumblebee movie, which is objectively, yes friends, this isn't editorializing, the best Transformers movie. Fight me. Or don't, I'm, I'm kind of delicate. But I think this thing looks cool. Now, I don't really do Masterpiece Transformers. I used to, used to dig them, but I do like this design and you gotta love any Prime mold in black, which is... Weird, I was never that guy, but you saw earlier in the week I talked about Nemesis Prime and from the MDLX line, and I'm kind of a big fan, and this looks really good too, so I don't know. I'm probably going to avoid it just because cash, I prefer to spend it on other things, but if you see it and you dig it, you might want to pick it up because, again, I need to see those pictures, and again... Whenever you get anything in black, especially a robot with all these intricate design details that can move like this and transform, you're going to get some killer shots and a very cool action figure. And that, ladies and gents, concludes the action figure slash robot part of today's toy photography news. Now, as always, I'll be sure to leave product links in the video description below. If they are affiliate links, they will go towards supporting the channel. So if you pick up anything on those websites using those links, I appreciate it. But I also appreciate all of you just watching this craziness because, well, it's fun to do. So without further ado, let's get on to the dios. Scouring eBay is an auction from GPS Lot for the five toys, one twelfth scale battlefield diorama stand with LED backdrop. Now there are only two problems I see with this thing. The first one is a photographic problem, and that is if you angle it, you're not going to get a 3D effect for what's behind the glowy spinny thing. But the marketing problem is the one that really has me sad. There's no way Thanos is in front of that light. You should have Captain America in the extreme foreground and maybe Black Panther standing out of that portal. But uh, you guys can do that with your photos if any of you end up winning this bad boy on eBay. Pretty good stuff. I think it looks great. And I think somebody should win it. In fact, I'm pretty sure somebody will win it. Yeah, I'm going to stop now while I'm ahead.
Up next on eBay and from Papatoons underscore customs comes this warehouse diorama. Now what really strikes me cool about this thing is just how old and beat up it looks. It's another one of those old decrepit buildings that you can see some crazy characters hanging out around. People like, I don't know, maybe you could get Spawn in there as they showed in this image, which is actually pretty cool. That was brilliant marketing. But something else I really enjoy about dios like this is they're awfully general. You can put your Marvel guys in there, you can put your DC guys in there, you can put all kinds of just city characters in there. It's really multi-purpose, kind of just works for a lot of things. And so that kind of thing will generally get my eye every time, which doesn't work when you use the word generally. Folks, English is tricky. Obviously, I'm a sucker for things that look destroyed as we check out this other rubble diorama from Papatoons underscore customs again. Now, I've never bought anything from him, but I'm looking at it, and he has 569 sales and 100% positive feedback. So maybe check this out if you think any of this stuff looks cool. But it's another 112 scale dio that works really well for all kinds of action figures. And like I said, I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. So I look at it and I'm thinking, huh, what can I make work on this thing? And he's got pics of Batman and Superman. Maybe a Superman and Doomsday fight in there, or Superman and Darkseid, or maybe Batman's just exploring the area, being the Dark Knight detective that he is. Who knows? I don't know. I'm coming up with ideas and basically trying to talk myself out of getting this stuff while also saying things that make me want to get this stuff. I need a hobby. Away from this hobby. Switching from the eBay to the Etsy, we have this Lava Ruins diorama from Papatoons Customs. Folks, I did not plan that. There was no intentional, hey, let's plug Papatoons Customs a lot this week. But apparently, I'm plugging Papatoons Customs a lot this week because, frankly, he's just doing some killer stuff. Anywho, he says in the description that this is for six to eight inch action figures and that the way that the lava effects happen is because the bottom is translucent so we can light it up from underneath however we want and i'm looking at this thing he uses mandarin spawn to show it off as well as some dragon ball z figures all that good stuff i'm looking at it thinking can vader work on this thing i don't know i don't know because i don't see the galactic empire actually making steps out of stones but I do know that looking at this, I'm kind of a fan. This is sweet. So if you have any action figures that this thing looks like it'd be perfect for, get yourself an Etsy account and go grab this thing. Sticking with Etsy, and from Mini World ID comes this Battle Damaged Back Alley diorama. Very, very cool stuff. Another set that you look at and you realize, hey, I can throw all kinds of things on this thing just looks good to me. I don't know what else to say. I see it, and I just see massive photographic opportunity. You throw in a photogenic figure in this thing, you have some kind of throwdown, and suddenly the background almost becomes a character itself. Very good stuff. Stuff that I see, and I'm just like, Ooh, I need more of the monies. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the diorama portion of today's Toy Photography News. Now, I'll be sure to leave links to all this stuff in the video description below. Check them out. Check out these creators. See if they have other stuff there that you think is really cool. And leave a comment and let me know who else you would like to see featured in the dio section. I know there's plenty of people that I still feel like I need to talk about, but you might know even more, so post them below and... Let's make it happen that we can get a lot of people to check out their stuff and maybe even buy some stuff because they're making this whole action figure photography thing a little more fun. And now, on to the props. On eBay from Pincushion, we have the Contraband 112 scale table. Now this thing just looks like it's got it all. We've got stuff that maybe people shouldn't have, which I suppose would be the whole definition of contraband. But I see this table and I think to myself, 
What if Frank showed up? What if the old Punisher showed up and it was just a bunch of gangsters hanging around there or a bunch of no good nicks? That's right, I'm taking it way back. And he shows up, all these people are there, suddenly there's a whole bloodbath. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff with just this as the centerpiece. This table could actually be the focal point of your toy photo. I think it's good stuff. I think it's cool. I think that it could add a lot of dimension to whatever it is you're trying to pull off, especially if it's a shot involving everybody's favorite gun-wielding vigilante. That's Punisher, in case I was unclear. Sticking with the eBay train, we have the Halloween candy bucket from Juice Minis. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever a holiday comes along, I realize I just don't have enough stuff to actually celebrate it properly, and Halloween is my bar none absolute favorite holiday, bar none, because redundancy. But I'm looking at this thinking, imagine somebody like Wolverine going trick-or-treating. Imagine the Watcher deciding that he's done watching and he wants to try this whole candy thing. Maybe even imagine really wanting to make a scary photo and the Joker shows up at your door, hoping that you'll put a little bit of candy in his pail. You don't want to do that, because he'll probably let off some kind of laughing gas. But I just saw this, and I thought, I need stuff like this. And I thought with Halloween coming, and before it's last minute, and while we're still maybe thinking about it, maybe you want something like this as well. Next, we're taking a turn into Etsy Town. From Geek Style Dioramas comes some money bundles. They are 10 money bundles, and then there's 10 $100 bills. They're not real, otherwise I'd spend $8 to get all that, but they do work for your 6-inch 112 scale action figures. And it's another thing that maybe you can throw down with that contraband table, or anything you can think of. These are just little items that you can throw into your scenes to make things look a little more realistic. I can't wait till I can start loading up on all this stuff, but as you can see, when you spend 10 bucks here, 5 bucks here, 15 bucks here, things add up and it gets tricky. But money is always nice, and I'm sure your action figures would appreciate it, so uh, check this stuff out. Let's be honest, folks. Your photogenic action figures work up quite a sweat when they're battling their nemeses out there. And so what do they need to refuel? They need calories. They need carbs. And let me tell you, the littlest gift shop is poised to give them those carbs through Hostess Snack Cakes. Yes, friends, we can get 112 scale cupcakes, zingers, and Twinkies. What action figure doesn't want that? Figured I'd throw that in there because that stuff's just fun. And if you look up Littlest Gift Shop all over Etsy, you're going to find that they have a lot of little weird stuff like that to just fill up your dios with. And that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Want it badly. $3.99. Not insanely expensive. It's just if you keep getting them, still. What action figure doesn't want a Twinkie? Somehow that didn't sound right. And here's another one from Juice Minis. Clearly, when it comes to dios and props, I have a type. But what we have here are 112 scale beer cans. Yeah. Sometimes your heroes need to celebrate, or your villains. Maybe they win more. Maybe they need to celebrate. Fortunately for them, they don't actually have taste buds, because I gotta tell you, while these beer mini cans are pretty cool, they are not the best flavors. Yeah. If you're a beer connoisseur and you look at this list, you're thinking, Wolverine, it's a good thing you're drinking that, and I'm not. Still, very cool additions to any Dio. And folks, that did it for the props. Be sure and check out these creators. I'll, of course, leave product links in the video description. Just check them all out. Decide what you want to get, because truly, this is the kind of stuff that adds to your action figure photos. And hey, again, if there's anyone else you want me to talk about, go ahead and let me know in the comments, because I want to know about the good stuff, you might know about the good stuff. So let's, uh, let's chat, you know? Like I said, I'm 
gonna get better about the whole comments on YouTube, otherwise... I, I might have to kick my own. <laughs> Anywho, on to the weapons. And now it's time to talk weapons, and this week, I'm talking about two weapons manufacturers, the first one being Mark II Toys. Formerly, Mark II Designs. Now, this is the guy that has helped when it comes to Action Force's weapons. I don't know the extent, but from his designs from before, I'd say he's helped quite a bit because those are some pretty sweet guns. If you have Action Force figures, you know what I'm talking about. And he's launched his own thing right now. And I just saw his presentation. He sent Robo of the Fwoosh some packs for the Fwoosh Play Day. And as I was watching Robo undo these, I'm like, wow, that's a really great presentation. Robo also accidentally popped one of the guns out to hit the floor, and it was packed really well. So a lot of times, a lot of these third-party gun manufacturers are kind of made of brittle stuff, and it didn't snap. It hit the ground when it popped out of the blister, and it was fine. So the presentation's great. The quality looks great. They are printed or created in a dark gray ABS plastic, so they're sturdy, they hold their detail, and they're strong. So this is somebody that I think we need to pay attention to. This is somebody I think we need to support. In the future, he has said that he's going to start adding some color to some of the weapons, but right now, he's got weapon sets A and B up on his store, so I'll make sure and leave a link in the product description if you like guns and you like quality and your action figures need to shoot things, check out Mark II Toys. Gridiron Studios continues to crush it in the G.I. Joe weapon manufacturing game with their Bazooka Soldier loadout and their Mortar Trooper loadout. Now, these things are rad. They're going to definitely help out your figures, but we're going to flash to just pictures now. Because... I'm not going to pretend to know everything that's in these things. I can name a few things, but not all of it. So I figure if I just show you pictures, you'll get a better sense of what all you get. This stuff is just cool. I've bought from Gridiron Studios before. Love their stuff. It's the stuff you got to be a little careful. Don't let the kids handle it. It's a little brittle. Not too bad, but a little bit. So make sure that when you're using it and you put it in your figure's hands, you warm up your figure's hands first because you don't want to snap off the weapon. But other than that, these things are great. They look phenomenal, and they just do a great job. I've shown you pictures before of my Roadblock set that I got, and it just takes them right back to how Roadblock looked in, what was it, 1984 when he came out. I was really impressed. Again, and I always say this, not an all-80s, all-the-time kind of guy, but that deco, that demanded that set. So, yeah. Check out Gridiron Studios because they have a whole lot more and they're constantly adding more. You'll definitely want them if you need to arm that G.I. Joe or Cobra Army. And that, ladies and gents, concludes the weapons portion of today's toy photography news, which brings us to the editorial. Folks, you're weirdos. I'm a weirdo. Anyone who collects anything above and beyond their means total weirdo. The person down the street who loads up on precious moments, nut job. The dude over there who's spending all kinds of money on tools and parts for his cars, total wackadoo. The person over there who maybe is collecting sporks, you know what, never mind, sporks are rad, don't ever let anybody tell you otherwise. These people are all nuts, just like you and me are nuts. But we can't rip on them They've got their own thing. They shouldn't rip on us. We've got our own thing. But where the real problem comes in is when I get online and I see that we're tearing each other apart because of how we collect. And that's no good. Believe it or not, this whole action figure community is not very big. So we shouldn't be doing that. That's crap. After all, there's only one person you should be listening to when it comes to how you collect. And that's me. I'm kidding, of course. The only person you should listen to when it comes to how you collect is yourself. Because let's face it, folks, opinions are like nose hairs. Everybody's got them, and there's boogers attached. That was really gross. Anyway, that 
is this week's toy photography news. Please comment below and let me know what all I missed, what you'd like to see in future episodes of the news. And please remember to like and subscribe and share and do all the things that you think would help out because, hey, I appreciate it. And until next time, have fun and happy snapping. See ya.